Food block is stepped in there. Jim Lombard down looking to Elson Howard into the windup, the kick, and the first pitch of the ball game. A little bit outside, a curveball. Defensively for the Red Sox, Scott at first. Second base, Andrews, shortstop, Petrocelli at third base, Boy, The pitch by Lombard to Brock. The ball hit out in the left field. You're simply going over. That ball may be in there. The Smithy catches up with it. A great play by Carl Smithy. So he this ball came off right in that left field corner. And it looked like the Brock may stop this game off with an extra base hit. The strength he's playing over towards center had a long way to run, but he's fast and he got there and he made the play. Kirk Flood, 4 for 25, batting 160. The first pitch to Lombard gets popped up out of the center field. Reggie Smith could have no trouble with it. Underneath it and pitches. Or out number two. been only one previous 4-3 series in which the two seven-game starters had 2-0 records for the series. 1925, Walter Johnson of Washington and Dick Aldridge of the Pittsburgh Club. Walter Johnson went all the way, but they lost the ball game 9-7. Jim Lombard pitching to Roger Maris. A curveball in there for a call back one. And you're going to hear noise all day. It's two away. When the top half the first inning here at Fenway Park. In Boston. The seventh game of the World Series. Lombard kicks. Here's the pitch. Better low and inside. Elston Hyde wanted that one. The count. One ball and one strike. Maris had a good series. He's batting 348. 8 for 23. He has one home run. And that was the run run that they got the Cardinals off of Jim Lombard over in Bush City. Here's the pitch. Ball right back through the middle. Andrews backhands the ball. No chance to throw out Roger Maris. Both Lombard had a shot at that ball. Right back through the middle. He put his glove down. Could not come up with it. Andrews, knowing that he had no chance to throw out Maris, just held on to the ball. So Maris on at first base. With the first baseman of the ball game. And it brings up Orlando Cepeda. Three for 24. He has one run batted in. Batting one, two, five. The umpires in the day's game, Stevens behind home plate. Baldick at first. Newmont at second. Donatelli at third. The left field line, Rungi at the right field line, Paul Fryer. Orlando Cepeda, way back in that batter's box. Elson Howard gives the target. Lombard looks at Maris at first. Here's the pitch. Almost got him. Little inside. Ball one. It's two away. We're in the top half of the first inning. Orlando with that big bat of his. 36 inches, 40 ounces. Right down on the end of it. Lombard looks at Maris. Here's the pitch. Inside. Ball two. Howard out in front of home plate, massaging the ball. Says something to Jim Lombard. Cepeda having trouble with that bat. As we said yesterday, he doesn't seem to be fooled on the pitches. He just can't make contact. The 2-0 and pitch. Here it is. Down and out to Mike Andrews at second base. He'll go to John Scott over first. And that's off for Cepeda. And that's off of the Cardinals here in the first sitting of Fenway Park. So the score, St. Louis Cardinals nothing and the Boston Red Sox coming to bat. With Pee Wee Reese, this is Harry Carey. Joe Foy steps into the battle box to get things started. For the Red Sox here in the bottom of the first. Okay, Pee Wee. Bob Gibson. He's won two games in the series. 13 and 6 on the year. Facing Joe Foy. In the lineup, the pitch. Outside, ball one. And as we've said so many times, Bob Gibson, he gets right back on that rubber as soon as he gets the ball from the catcher. He is ready to pitch. Into the windup. Joe Foy swings. Fouls it back. One ball and one strike. Defensively for the Cardinals. Cepeda at first. Second base. Javier at shortstop. Maxwell. Third base. Shannon. In left field. Brock. Here's the windup. The pitch by Gibson. A curveball. Low and outside. Out in center field. Way out there is Kurt Flood. In right field, Roger Maris, the catcher, Tim McCarver, and the pitcher, of course, 
Bob Gibson into the windup. The two and one pitch to Foy. He started Texas three. Two and one. Inside. Joe Foy leading things off for the Red Sox here in the bottom half of the first inning. The Cardinals failed to score in the first inning. Into the windup. The pitch by Gibson. It's too high. the first man he faces, and hey, he doesn't do that too often. No, he doesn't. Mike Andrews, batting 400. He's four for ten. He chokes up on the bat. Here's the pitch. He puts one down the first baseline. The pitch up with it. Puts the ball over to Javier, covering first. Moving down to second base, Joe Boy. situation for the Cardinals here. Take the walk anybody intentionally in the very first inning. And yet here's a real hot hitter up there. Ty Gostinsky. The interesting to see what they do. Well, I think that Dick Williams may have this in mind. He's just going to test the Cardinals and see if he's going to pitch them. It looks like they are. It's pretty hard to walk a man in the first inning intentionally. And they're going to pitch to Gostinsky. Bob Gibson, the kick. In there, just got the inside corner, strike one. You better believe he will be careful with this fellow. Gostrinsky, 9 for 22. Three home runs in the series. Batting in a cool 4 9 Down at second base, Joe Foy. Gostrinsky holds that bat high. Gibson looks back at Foy at second and makes the wheel and flips the ball to Maxwell. And it looked like Maxwell was shortstop with going to cut in back of Foy as Foy broke off at second base. Like he may be going. One strike on your strip. It's one away. Where's the bottom half the first inning? Gibson looks back a second. Here's the pitch. That's ball outside. Makes it count one ball and one strike. Bob Gibson trying to win a third game here in this seventh game of the World Series. The set. Here's the pitch. The attempt to win. Lazy Looper off the shortstop. Maxwell puts his glass and takes it. And Gibson jammed him with that pitch. It's two away. Brings up Ken Harrelson. Talking about things you don't see too often. You don't see your sense. You get jammed too much with a fastball. Harrelson, one for nine. Batting 111. Gibson checking with McCarver, his catcher. McCarver giving the sign. Gibson sets, looks back a second. Here's the pitch. Curveball in there for foul strike one. Gibson looks to me like he may be changing his pattern. And in the first two games, he, he started off with a lot of fastballs. Today, he's thrown a few breaking balls already. One strike on Ken Helson. Here's the pitch. Swing it in there, strike two. A good fastball. He's on top of Harrison with two strikes. Joe Foy down at second base. It's two away. Bottom half the first inning. This game has just gotten underway. Harrison way back in that batter's box, moving that bat back and forth. Now he steps, so is Gibson. The pitch. That's ball. In there for top strike three. Harrison caught looking, so that's all for the Red Sox. In the bottom half of the first inning, the score, St. Louis nothing, and Boston nothing. Top half of the second inning coming up, and Tim McCarver, Mike Shannon, and Julian Javier will be the first three hitters coming up for the St. Louis Cardinals. No score, Bob Gibson, after walking the first man, really went to his fastball and good breaking ball, and got the next three men off now. So now here's McCarver leading it off for the Cardinals. Be we. Top half the second inning. McCarver, Cannon and Javier. Jim Lombard, he's ready. Elton Howard giving him the sign. Jim kicks that big leg up in the air high. Here's the pitch. The ball is popped up. Steps the side of the shortstop. Puts his glasses underneath it and takes it. Ball out number one. Both 
of these pitches. If you can tell this quickly, look sharp. Mike Shannon. He has one home run in the series. Five for 20, batting 250. The big third baseman. Hits from the right side, right down on the end of that bat. Lombard, the kick, the pitch. The curveball, he was taking all the way. It's in there for call strike one. Both of these pitchers, Lombard for the Red Sox, Gibson for the Cardinals, had good control. There's no need of taking anything. They're very solid walk anyone. There's a sound on curveball. And that's been the pattern Lombard has followed against Shannon. Try to get that first strike in on him, then shot on him with that curveball. And he comes way around by the way of third base. No balls, two strikes on Shannon, this one away. And a shot on curveball, come out of there. The first strikeout. Jim Lombard. And that'll bring up a little fellow that's had a real fine series, not only with the bat, batting 333, 7 for 21. But what a series he's had in that field. He's made a couple of great plays at second base. Javier, Eddie Basu, the shortstop, utility infielder for the Cardinals, says you really can't appreciate this fellow until you've seen him play and been with him day in and day out. Quite a player. Chokes up on the bat. Lombard kick. Here's the pitch. It's foul straight back. Elton Hyde over to his right. Stops on it. Way back in the stand. Strike one. It's two away. We're in the top half of the second inning here at Fenway Park. The seventh game of the World Series. Harry Carey and I'm Pee Wee Reese bringing you this seventh game. And it certainly has been a pleasure bringing you all seven games of the World Series here on radio. The kick for Lombard. There's a face head out into left field. Yuspinski takes it all one hop. And that's the second hit for the Cardinals. One by Mass and one by Javier. So that's the eighth hit in the series for Javier. He likes to run. And as Harry told you, Maxwell likes to hit and run. Let's see what they do. We'll walk out of here at first. Lombard watching over first. He's not going. A curveball in there. Stack one. He has the pitcher up next. Bob Gibson. And he is not a bad hitter. Maxwell steps back out of that box. Checks for these coach. Joe Schultz at third base. Facing at first base. Dick Sisler. That's for the Cardinals. Lombard. Takes it easy. Here's the pitch. And Elson Howard picked out. He thought that Javier may be going, so that makes the count one ball and one strike. Maxwell still checking with Joe Schultz. Stepped out of the box. Schultz giving the sign down at third. Touching the cap, the letters. Well, if he gave anything, he's already given it because Maxwell's back in the line bar. Steps over to first. And Javier had a pretty good lead. He may be going. One ball and one strike. It's two away. Top pass the second inning. Maxwell looking out at Lombard. Lombard drawing and he flips over to first again. And Javier diving back in there. Javier gets a pretty good lead. Lombard looks over at Javier. Here's the pitch. Javier made a bluff, but he did not go in there. All strike two. And Howard came out behind that batter, ready to throw. A good bluff to Javier at first base. It's two away. McCarver started this inning off by popping up. Shannon struck out. Javier singled. Maxwell is a hitter with one ball and two strikes on him. The throw to first base. Javier back in plenty of time. Maxwell has two for 15, batting 133. Jim Lombard. He stooped over getting the sign. Here's the pitch. Side on curveball, just missed. Two and two. He's tough on right handers. Tough to stay in there. Maxwell checking with Schultz at third base. They're playing Maxwell straight away, not too deep. Lombard sets. 
There's a pitch. There goes Javier to Tim Side hard throw. made some throw of the pitch to Maxville was rolling inside right off his shoe tops and Howard had a spin around and throw and he threw perfectly. Doug Scott takes the first pitch by Gibson outside. Ball one. It'll be John Scott, Reggie Smith, and Rico Petroselli. Here's the pitch for Gibson. Low and inside. Ball two. Batting 227 in the series. He has five for 22. He's choking on the bat a little bit today. Gibson, curveball, in there for a call strike one. That's what makes this fellow a good pitcher. He can throw hard, but he kind of finesses you every once in a while. He gets behind you, he can still get that curveball over. There it is, a good bat ball. Swung on, missed, strike two. And looked like that pitch was right in the power of George Scott. But just a little bit inside. He tried to chop down on him. No contact. Two and two is the count. Gets him to wind up the kick. Third ball. He's got him looking. George Scott looks at the third strike. And that's the second strikeout. For Bob Gibson. That brings up Reggie Smith, the center fielder for the Red Sox. You know the Cardinals played in 10 World Series, they've won seven of the games, and five of those seven wins went to the seventh game, and the Cardinals have never lost a series that they've gone to seven games in. Reggie Smith, Gibson, first pitch, run on miss, strike one. It's one away, we're in the bottom half of the second inning, here at Fenway Park in Boston, the seventh game of the World Series, Gibson pitches. Reggie Smith started check this way. I guess he got a piece of it. Strike two. Pop Gibson working fast. McCarver getting the signs. In the wind up to kick the 0 2 pitch. A grounder out to second base and Javier on a big hop. Flips the ball over to Cepeda. And that's all for Reggie Smith. So it's two up and two down here in the bottom half of the second inning. Petroselli gets a nice hand. He's the shortstop for the Red Sox. He was in a little batting slump until yesterday. He just knocked two out of the park. He has good power. Gibson, curveball, low. And I saw in the paper with Ben Priscilli said the two home runs he hit yesterday were fastball. Gibson starts him off with a curve today. The one and old pick. Another curveball. Spun on. Missed. Strike one. They play Petrucelli, especially Kurt Flood out in center field, around to left center to pull. Petrucelli, Gibson, the kick. Another curveball, swung on, miss. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. The first time Petrucelli saw Gibson in the first game, Gibson struck him out three times. One ball, two strikes. The kick by Gibson, the pitch. A curveball foul straight back. And the count remains one and two. Coaching at first base for the Red Sox, the great second baseman Bobby Doerr. Over at third base, Ed Fatowski. He struck Petricelli out, and that's all for the Red Sox. Here in the bottom half of the second inning, the score, the St. Louis Cardinals nothing, and the Boston Red Sox nothing. Darrell Maxwell is a hitter. Leading off the top half of third inning. You remember he was a hitter when they threw out Javier at second base trying to steal. Curveball. Out inside. Ball one. It'll be Maxwell, Gibson, and Brock. Convert kicks. That arm. Fastball hit down at third base line. The on down at third. Boots it the fans. Give him a little blast. What a job these umpires have done in the series, eh? Certainly have, Pee Wee. 
One ball, one strike. Calling time. There must be something great over the wall in left field. Frank Umont, the second base umpire, spotted it. And uh, there it is a towel, it looks like. But I think it's a towel. It looks to me like a fan. Pounding up in the screen out there, but they're getting him down. This game is ready to start. Bromberg, pitch to Maxwell, hit out into center field. Reggie Smith going way back, way back, way back. It's off of the wall, Maxwell. Robin Sutton going into third. Ken Houston ready to pick up the ball, and they hold on to it as Maxwell. Hits one off of that center field wall, straight away in center field. That's unusual power for Don Maxwell, who this year hit one home run during the regular season, and that was inside the park. Uh, he really hit this one yesterday in a fly ball deep in the center that surprised everybody. And today, he surprised them even more by hitting one off the top of the center field wall. Well, it's a triple for Dow Maxwell. Being off the third inning, the infield is in. Bob Gibson is the hitter, the pitcher for the Cardinals. Ron Park looks over at third. Maxwell, here's the kick, the pitch. Curveball in there for call strike one. You know, Harry, Maxwell hit a couple of hard balls to center field yesterday with Cross. Yes, that's the one that I was referring to up here. It's unusual for him to hit straight away. He usually hits the ball towards right field. The pick by Lombard. Outside, one ball and one strike. So the Cardinals are threatening here in the top half of the third inning. The Red Sox have the infield pulled in with no one away. Gibson's a hitter. Lombard looking down at his catcher, Elston Howard. Looks over at Maxwell. Here is the kick, the pitch. Her ball inside. Two balls, one strike on Gibson. Gibson checks with Joe Schultz at third base. Not a bad hitter. He will just be trying to get a piece of the ball. Here's the kick, the pitch. At the fastball, just got the outside. Connor makes the count two and two. Maxwell down at third. Just got through tripping off the center field wall. Oh, well, that's smoke out there. I believe the building's on fire out beyond the center field fence. That's all we need, Eric. <laughs> two and two. The cat on top gets it. Here's the pitch. the bay, and Gibson really cleaned that one, but all it is is a big out. It's supposed to be a game of skill, not bravery, Pee Wee. So it's one away now, Maxwell Field down in third, and it brings up Lou Rock, the infielder, still in. On board, set, here's the pitch. Against Lombard, Brock is nothing out of nine. It's the only pitcher who's been able to stop him so far. Well, let's see how he's trying to pitch it. That pitch was going outside. Looks like Lombard wanted it. Here's the kick, the pitch. That's ball outside. Ball two. It's one away. The runner's still down at third base. Dal Maxwell, the Cardinal, in the top half of third inning. No runs for the Cardinals, but they have three hits. Boston has no runs or no hits. Lou Brock, for the count of two balls, no strikes on him, steps out of there. As Lombard takes a little bit too much time. Takes a little bit too much time for Brock. Brock now checking with Schultz, who's coached at third base. Lombard just standing there, staring down at Brock. Now he's ready. Here's the pitch. Two and two. Ball foul off the left. Back up in the stand. And the count. Two balls and one strike. Brock had a fine series. He has four 
runners score on bases, has one home run, three runs batted in, pay a cool 400. Right now, it's two balls and one strike on him. Lombard, here's the pitch. He may be looking for something. And the count of two and two. One away. Maxwell still down at third. They play Brock. Deep and straight away the infield is in. Lombard looks over at Maxwell at third. The kick. The pitch. A foul off the left back in the stand. Three hits by the Cardinals. No runs, no hits for the Red Sox. Lombard against Gibson. They have both won two games in the series. The seventh and final game of the World Series. Here's the pitch. It's wrapped up. That's the seven of the shortstop. Out for it. Back near the edge of the grass and takes it. And Maxwell cannot score on that. Sending off with a triple off the center field wall. Two outs later, he's still down there. And it brings up Kurt Flood, who flat out the center field his last time the first pitch done is too high. Ball one. He knows the first pitch to practically every hitter is tight. The inside part of the plate. He seems to have a pattern, Harry. That fastball tight inside and breaking pitch away. As the ball hit out in center field, it's a base hit. Reggie Smith takes it on one hop in the score as Maxwell, the first run in this ball game, at Kurt Flood gets his fifth hit of the series, driving in Dal Maxwell. So the Cardinals go out in front of this ball game by a score of one to nothing. Lombard. Doing a fine job of pitching, getting two outs. Then Kurt Flood gets a base hit to score Maxwell. Roger Maris for the hitter. Lombard looks over at Kurt Flood. Here is the pitch. Ball hit by Scott out in the right field. It's a base hit. Up at the ball's half and going into third. It's Kurt Flood. Look out there. They send him. Molly hold him up there. Third base. On at first base, Roger Maris. Kiwi, the Cardinals now have five hits. We're in the third inning of this game. In the first two games along their pitch, a total of 18 innings, they had a total of four hits. So that short rest must make a difference. Well, I would say it would have to, Harry. This fellow, as I said, pitched 290 some odd innings during the season. And they had a tough penetrator all the way, and he is a big man. He had to pitch Sunday to beat the Minnesota Twins with a tough ball game. I saw it, and so did most of the fans. Of the country. We paired the game on NBC television. So he's had a tough year, but don't count him out yet. Cepeda, the first pitch. Inside, ball one. Kiwi, I hope this fire over there doesn't spread. They let smoke billowing upwards. Still haven't seen any flame. Where there's smoke, <laughs> there's fire. The one and old pitch to Arno Cepeda. Has the ball hit hard, but it's fouled down the left field line. He was a count up at one ball and one strike. On at third base, Kurt Flood. On at first base, Roger Maris. One ball, one strike on Arno Cepeda. Had a rough series. The baby bull has one run batted in. Three for 25 now. He grounded out the first time up to the second baseman, Mike Andrews. Lombard. Here's the pitch to Cepeda. In there. All right, two. Two away. Runners on first and third. It can't be a serious fire. The smoke's only coming out of the top. <laughs> well, we'll watch it. One ball, two strikes on Cepeda. 
It's two away. When the top half just ended and the Cardinals have one run, they lead this game one to nothing. The kick, the pitch. It's high and inside. Ball two. Tim McCarver. In the on-deck circle. Lombard. The big winner for the Red Sox. Pitched the big games all year. He won 22 and lost nine during the regular season. And as we said, what a dog fight it was in the American League. Lombard sets. Looks at first and third. Here's the pitch. Santiago is working on the Red Sox bullpen. Well, hey, we saw Ron Bard pitch the first two games. Up to now, it doesn't look like the same fellow. It doesn't. He's not sharp. The three and two pitch to Cepeda. A ground and half the shortstop. Pepper Sully, the long throw over the guard stop. And that's all for Cepeda and that's all for the Cardinals here. The top half is They came up with two big runs. The score up to two and a half innings of play. It's the Cardinals two, and the Boston Red Sox nothing. This is Harry Carey with Pee Wee Reese. The Cardinals are having fun as a result of a triple by Mazio and base hits by Fred and Harris and a wild pitch. Two to nothing as we go into the bottom of the third. Pee Wee. Nelson Hard, Bob Gibson's first pitch time. Low, ball one. The Red Sox will have to play catch up baseball now. Bob Gibson, the kick, the pitch. Little lazy pop as he jams with it. Cepeda down at first base. In fair territory, takes it. It's one up. And one down here in the bottom half of the third inning. Long guard, the pitcher. Get your hands from the fan. Get you. An overpying pitcher. So many of them. Teams in the National League, managers, Dean Mock told me that the manager of the Phillies, Ron Bard, swings and misses, strike one. He just keeps fine. Here is a kick to pitch. Curveball, a little outside, one ball and one strike. Hey, when you lost this fellow during the season, I thought you'd lost the pennant. Nelson Brown stepped right in and did a tremendous job, Kiwi. Ron Bard. Tries to check his swing, goes around, one ball and two strikes on him. It's one away with about a half the third inning. Gibson has not given up a hit. The Cardinals have two runs on five hits from the bottom half the third inning. Here's the kick to pitch. A fastball on a Danny. Lombard carb looking. And that is the third strikeout. Fourth strikeout. Well, Bob Gibson is two away. Brings up Joe Ford. He walked his first time up. For the Red Sox. Gibson in the windup, the kick. Her ball in there, strike one. And there's no use taking against this fella. He's always around that plate. And a curveball just missed. Sat on curveball, outside. One ball and one strike. It's two away. The kick by Gibson. Just got that outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Well, hey, are you satisfied now? Here comes the fire department. Boy. I tell you, might be a little late. <laughs> the one and two pitch too far. Just barely get a piece of his balance straight back. If I were out in center field, in those places, I may be a little concerned right now. One ball, two strikes on four. It's two away. You have a lot of friends out there. They heard your remark and they began to wave. So they wanted to train sister radios out there. There's <laughs> all cowboy Mark Wilson. And that's all for the first back here in the bottom half of the third inning. So the score after three full innings, the Cardinals two and the Boston Red Sox nothing. Past the fourth inning. The Cardinals two runs on five hits. And hey, I must say... Those three 
the innings went pretty fast. It's your turn. Come on in here. Harry Kay. Thank you, Pee Wee. Tim McCarver will lead it off. Popped up his first round up. He's two out of 20 in the series. Cardinals leading two to nothing. Brownberg's first pitch is a curveball low. Brownberg working with two days rest. Bobby Sharp as he was in his first two stops. And that's understandable. This boy has had a tremendous series, regardless of how this game comes out, just as he's had a great season. The pitch to McCarver, and it's a little bit outside of the knee. Two balls, no strike. McCarver, nothing out of seven against the pitching of Jim Lombard. Bob Gibson has fanned five men in the first three innings. Gibson shooting for his fifth straight World Series victory. Here's the pitch. A fastball in there the letters, a strike is caught. The Red Sox with Foy at third base, Petra Sully at shortstop, Andrews at second, and Scott at first. Behind the plate is Elston Hall. Long board the pitcher. Yes, Stumsky in left, Smith in center, and Harrelson in right. Two balls and a strike to pitch on the way. Fastball, swung and miss. And he lost his plastic helmet on that one. And the count is even two and two. The Cardinal hitters think they, they've been chasing a lot of bad balls against Lombard, and there was an example of it. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the fourth. Cardinals out in front, two to nothing. Here's the pitch. Curveball, low and inside. McCarver had a notion, started a swing, stopped, and then got out of the way. The count is four, three balls, two strikes. And the fire has been put out in that building across the way. Three balls, two strikes. McCarver, left-handed, out of the pitch. He bounces one foul off his foot and then fair down to Scott. So he's still alive, although he's hobbling around a little bit. That one hit him right off the instep. McCarver picks up the rosin bag, dries off his hands and returns to the foot. McCarver in the 1964 World Series against the Yankees was a sensation. He hit 478 or something like that. In this series, the Red Sox have stopped him. 478 was right. Out the signal. 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Ground ball to the second baseman. That should be easy. Andrews has it. Over to Scott for the up. McCarver rolled to Mike Andrews. And that'll bring up Mike Shannon. He fanned his first time up. He's nothing out of seven against Lombard. That fire that we referred to was in a railroad car on a siding across the way. And happy to report that it's been extinguished. The pitch to Shannon. Hot ball in there, a strike is called. One strike and no ball. Lombard actually looks sharper here in this fourth inning than he did earlier in the game. Seems to find that real good fastball is again. Here's a pitch. And it's inside, forcing Shannon back. The count is even at a ball on the strike. The Cardinals, two runs, five hits, no error so far. And the Red Sox, nothing across. One man out, nobody on base, top of the fourth. Two to nothing in favor of St. Louis. Here's a pitch to Shannon. Her ball, foul back and out of play. Mike Shannon. Homered earlier in the series. Hit a homer in the 1964 World Series against Whitey Ford. Three, two strikes and a ball. One out. We're in the fourth inning to pitch. Bouncing ball to Foy. He's got it. Here's the peg. In top. So Foy throws out Shen. Two up, two down. And that will bring up Javier who singled his first time at bat was out trying to steal. The first Cardinal thrown out stealing. In fact, he was the first Cardinal to try to steal, with the exception of Lou Brock, who's had four stolen bases. Javier, having himself a great series, he's two out of seven against Lombard. He ruined Lombard's no-hitter in the second game of the series here at Fenway Park. Now the pitch. And who he lines one foul. And Joe Schultz, the third base coach, hit the duck to get out of the way of that one. And now kind of loosens the vertebrae, vertebrae a little bit as he does a little dance. Javier Nevada. 
There are two men out. Nobody on base. Two to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Air ball, strike call. The scoreboard says one and one, but that's got to be a mistake. He fouled off the first pitch. I just took the second one for a curved strike. Now they're correcting it. Javier the bat. Jim Lomboy getting ready. The pitch. Strike three call to fastball. There's Lomboy's second strike out. The Cardinals go down in order. One, two, three, and a fourth. And at the end of three and a half innings, the score remains single as two. Lost to nothing. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The skies had been overcast with the sun for the first time. Peace from behind the cloud. And here is Mike Andrews to lead it off the first pitch. He didn't mean to swing. Half swing and he fouls it off to the right. Bobby Doerr recovers it. Bobby fumbled that one. When he was a second baseman for the Red Sox, he rarely fumbled the ground ball. He had an errorless record, as I recall. Later broken. Bob Gibson, Thompson fires. There's the strike call. Andrews shot up as if the bunt. Andrews sacrificed his first time at bat. He's had a good series, hitting 400 with 4 out of 10. Leading off here in the fourth, 2 to nothing in favor of St. Louis. Here's a pitch. Curveball low. Gibson mixing his pitches more this afternoon than he has previously. Mike Andrews, right-handed batter, chokes up a little bit. Here's the pitch. Foul back and out of play. He got around late on a high fastball. The decisive game of the World Series. Whoever wins this one wins the booty, as it were. The winner's share. There's no tomorrow. This is it. Mike Andrews waiting. Two strikes and a ball. And Gibson fits. A tap. Foul down the third baseline. McCarver pounces on it, but there's no reason to. And so comes back to the play. Shannon playing straightaway third base. Andrews is played straight away in the outfield. Bob Gibson, who has fanned five in three innings, gets ready. Two strikes and a ball. Yes, Stunsky will be next to the pitch. He struck him out, call. Andrews is called out on strike. Strikeout number six for Bob Gibson. And here's Carl to Stunsky. Gibson already has found his money in this game and won the fourth inning as he did in all of his shutout victory. In his second game, his second victory. Here's a pitch to Yastrzemski, and it's a breaking ball low and inside. Yastrzemski popped up to the shortstop match for his first time at bat. He's had two out of nine against the pitching of Bob Gibson. Carl Yastrzemski, the pitch to him. Last ball, he started the swing, held up, and it was high for ball two. Yastrzemski hitting 409 in the series. He's got nine hits for 20 total bases. Has the most total bases of anybody in the series. Out of the signal. Here's the windup and the pitch. That ball in there is strike his call. We've talked about how hard Yastrzemski swings the bat. I'm sure that's common knowledge now. And it's significant that in seven games, as hard as he swings, He's only struck out once. Now the windup. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball to Javier. Big hop. He's got it. Puts over the first in time. Yastrzemski bounces out from Javier to Cepeda. Two out. Only one man has reached base and not on the walk. The leadoff man, Joe Ford. Ken Howson was out on strike his first time up. Gibson is fans six were in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Swung and fouled back. He had a good cut at a high fastball. One strike and no ball. Tim Carlson. Charlie Finley's gift to the Boston Red Sox. And to Howson, as a matter of fact. 
Now to wind up the bit. He swings and misses strike two. And Harrelson is in a hole, two strikes and nothing. Gibson keeps pouring smoke. I'm not referring now to that fire which has been extinguished. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Two to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Redbirds have had five hits. Red Sox haven't had any yet. They've got only one base runner, and he was stranded in the first inning. The leadoff man, Joe Foy, walked. Andrew sacrificed in the second. But Yasunski popped up at Harrelson fan. Here's a pitch, swung and fouled back. Two strikes and nothing, two out. Bottom of the fourth, St. Louis leading. Two to nothing. Tim McCarver goes out to talk to Bob Gibson. Gibson has hit four complete game victories in a row in the World Series. The first time he pitched in the series in 1964, the first game he was beaten. He pitched the decisive seventh game that year and won it. At a bring a four straight World Series victories. Here's a pitch. Curveball. Barely missed. Outside. Two strikes and a ball. Ken Harrelson. He's had one out of nine in this series. Facing Gibson for the first time in this game. He's out on strikes in the first inning. Two strikes and a ball. Two out. Nobody on the pitch. He struck him out swinging. Seven strikeouts. One, two, three go the Red Sox. In the fourth and at the end of four full innings. Goal remains. St. Louis two. Boston nothing. Dal Knoxville leads it off here in the top of the fifth for St. Louis. Triple his first time up. The first pitch to him is high. He scored the first run. On the wind-up, the pitch by Lombard, and it's a fastball a little bit low, ball two. Two balls, no strike. Lombard is fan two. Hasn't walked anybody. He's allowed five hits and two runs. Here's the pitch swung on, a bouncing ball to four. He's got a lot of time, throws perfectly. Knoxville bounces to four, he throws him out. Now to bring him Bob Gibson, who's retired on a line drive into a third baseman. Joe Foy in the third inning. You know, after Master let off with a triple off the center field wall, takes the line to Foy, and Brock popped up. And it looks like Ron Boy might still pitch his way out of the inning. But then Flood contributed a vital single to center. Here's the pitch to Gibson. Long and he fouled it back. The Boston fans. Giving Bob Gibson a fine hand as he stepped up to the plate. Here's the pitch. And it's low and inside. As the St. Louis fans gave Jim Lombard in St. Louis. One ball, one strike, one out, and nobody on. Two to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. We're in the fifth. The pitch by Lombard. I his call. Boy, he looks much sharper these last two innings than he did at the beginning of the game. Bright sunshine is bathing Fenway Park at the moment. The pitch. Swung on. A long drive. Deep left center. Way back. It might be out of here. It could be. And it is a home run for Bob Gibson. And boy, that was at the 379 foot mark up against a battery of cameras that are placed up there. Bob Gibson joins the list of pitchers who have hit home runs in World Series competition. And the score is now three to nothing. He hit that ball a long, long way. And the second base umpire, Frank Yuman, hustling out as far as he could to make sure he saw where it hit, indicated that it was a home run, although the ball bounced out to the field. Here's Brock. Bouncing foul down to Dick Sisler, coaching at first base. Bob Gibson has helped his own cause with a long home run. Beyond the 379 mark in the extreme center field corner. Little Brock, nothing out of two. Here's the pitch by Lombard. Sinking fastball low and outside. The count is even and the ball on the strut. Brock has had 10 out of 27 now in the series. He 
including nothing out of ten against Lombard. Here's the pitch. He swings and he misses. On the way, let's see, 27. Take out 10. He's 10 out of 17 against the other pitchers. But for Lomborg, he would have a phenomenal batting average. One run is in on a home run by Gibson. One out. The Cardinals are out in front. Three to nothing. Lomborg pitch. And Brock takes it high. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. One out and one in. Bob Gibson's first World Series home run. Out of time. Brock waiting. Here's the pitch. There's a line shot in the left field. That drops in there for a base hit. So Brock has his first hit. Yastrzemski fumbles the ball just a moment, but Brock doesn't try to advance. Brock has had his first hit against Jim Longboard. On his 11th time at bat, that'll bring up Kurt Flood, who may have gotten the most important hit of the game. When with two out and a runner at third, he lined his single to center to put the Cardinals out in front. A little huddle around the mound. Jose Santiago, who manager Dick Williams said would be his first pitcher up in the bullpen, is throwing out there. George Scott and Elston Howard talking to Jim Lombard. More a uh, delay tactic to enable Santiago to get ready out there. Now, Brock has stolen four bases. He's at first base with one out and Flood is a hitter. He takes a long lead. Lombard throws over there, but Brock is back. Brock leads with four stolen bases. Long lead, the pitch. Ooh, that goes behind Kurt Flood. And he winds up spinning around on these bats to the opposite side of the plate. During his entire National League career, Bob Gibson hit 12 home runs in regular season play. And today he got his first in World Series competition. Ralph Lee's on board getting ready. The hesitation at the belt. There goes Brock. The pitch. Howard drops it. And Brock has stolen his fifth base. Lou Brock steals second. Howard is so anxious to get the ball away, he dropped it. Brock had a great jump off first base. I doubt if Howard could have thrown him out. Brock now has 11 hits from the series. Leading everybody. So Kurt Flood has a chance of driving it around. Cardinals out in front, three to nothing. There's a stretch by Longboy. And the fish. It's a curveball in there for a strike call. Two balls and a strike on Flood. He's one out of two in this game, one out of nine against Longboy. He's had five hits in this series, which is in his seventh and final game. Rock, a short lead at second base, the fifth. High inside curveball. Ball three. Jose Santiago is out on the bullpen and throwing hard out there. Three balls, one strike on Kurt Flood. Rock, who literally tries to steal third. Stole 52 bases during the regular season. Stolen five in this series. There's a big, there he goes, trying to steal, and he's going to make it. Wait a minute. A, he's going to make it, all right. Flood started a swing and then stopped. The ball got away from Howard. I thought perhaps he might have fouled Pippen, but he didn't. Ball four, and Brock steals third. See, I told you he rarely tries to steal third base. I heard that, Harry. <laughs> but he had a big jump, and he went. And Flood put ball four, and Roger Maris comes up with runners at first and third and only one out. And the Cardinals in a spot now to really break it open. There's only one man out. The infield playing halfway around short and second. Rock the third, Flood the first. A lot of speed. The score three to nothing, St. Louis. The pitch to Roger Maris. Fastball low and away. One ball, no strike. Maris has ten hits in this series. 10 out of 25, which is a 400 batting average. Without too much publicity, he has done 
a fine job in this series. Runners at first and third. One out. Here's one board pitch. Curveball in the strike call. About even to the ball in the track. The infield in at first and third, halfway at short and second. On a sharply hit ground ball, they'll try for the double play. Three to nothing, St. Louis. The stretch. Here's the pitch. Way outside. Ball two. Two balls in the stretch. We're in the top of the fifth inning. The Cardinals have had three runs, seven hits. The Red Sox haven't had a hit, and naturally no runs. Lou Brock has tied a World Series record for stolen bases. Here's the stretch. Here's the pitch. Fight call. Get that outside corner. And listen who he tied. Jim Slagle of the Cubs, who stole six in five games in 1907. And Hannes Wagner of the Pirates, who stole six in seven games in 1909. Roger Maris with a count of two balls, two strikes. Line board six. Upside ball three. The crowd's very quiet here at Fenway Park. They're almost here a pin drop. As in this decisive game, the miracle of Fenway Park has not yet happened. But it's a long way to go in these Red Sox. You know the fabulous year they've had. Out of stretch. Here's a 3-2 pitch that goes for us. One long line drive in the right field. Harrison's going to catch it. He does. Here's Brock tagging up. Here's a throw to the plate. He's gone. And Myers has driven in his seventh run of the series. He leads both teams in RBI. A sacrifice fly by Roger Myers makes the score now forward and nothing. Two out. One who is starting on that 3-2 pitch. Had a comeback to first base. So the Taylor steps up with a runner at first. Ross now has scored eight runs. He leads both teams in that department. He's had 11 hits. He leads in that department. He has stolen six bases. He leads in that category. And here's Orlando Sepik. A throw with the first to run it back. Four to nothing in favor of the Cardinals in the top of the fifth. Out of stretch. By Lon Borg, he throws over the first, the runner is back. I don't believe the Cardinals have ever lost a seven-game World Series. And this is their fifth. Out of stretch. Here's the pitch. Cepeda had a cut and he fouled it back. Orlando is talking to himself. He's getting good cuts. He's getting good pitches. the Cardinals 11th World Series and are shooting for their 8th championship. Out of stretch. The pitch to Cepeda. Fastball is low. And the count evens and a ball and a stretch. Four to nothing in the top of the fifth. Bob Gibson hasn't allowed a hit as yet. And the stands 7 in the first four innings. There's a lead by Flood. The pitch by Lombard. One at a bad ball and he missed. Two strikes and the ball. Cepeda, quite obviously, now is present. The big man for the Cardinals all year long. He's been held to three hits and 26 times at bat in this series, and he's nothing out of nine against Lombard. He's driven in just one run. Cepeda goes to the rosin bag, now returns to the plate. The outfield plays him deep. Jim Lomboy getting ready. Now the pitch. Here it is. Her ball is low. That evens it up at two balls, two strikes. Top of the fifth inning. A capacity crowd at Sunway Park. Almost an abnormal silence at the moment. You couldn't think, you wouldn't think that 36,000 people or so could be so quiet. Two balls, two strikes. There's a throw there. 
the runner's back. Now they're whooping it up out there in the bleachers. <laughs> well, these are great fans out there. Here's the stretch. Two-two pitch. Here it is. Foul ball on the third baseline. Boy, guarding the line closely. Was over there to make the play, but it was a foul ball. So pay the bust of his bat on that one. He gets a new war club up there. Two balls, two strikes. So pay to the hitter. Kurt Flood on first base. Top of the fifth inning. Four to nothing, St. Louis. Here's the set. The fifth. Inside. A fastball three. Three balls, two strikes. Full count on Orlando Cepeda. Kurt Flood will be going with the pitch again. There's two men out and two runs are in. The first on a home run by Bob Gibson. Here's the stretch, the 3-2 pitch. There goes Flood. Howell back to the screen. And the count remains the same. You know, everybody uh, talking all through the series about the spectacular efforts of Carl Yastrzemski of the Red Sox and Lou Brock of the Cardinals. Bob Gibson might slip through to be the standout performer in the series. Taking nothing away from the other two men. Here's the stretch, 3-2 pitch. There goes the runner, swung on. A long drive, but foul. Out onto the street here. Yastrzemski has been sen sensational, not only all year long, but throughout the series. Lou Brock for the Cardinals to sparkle. Bob Gibson is allowed the Red Sox one run. And that's by Jose Santiago. But this game isn't over yet. Much can happen. Here's the stretch. The pitch. There goes the runner. Swung on. High top fly. Short left field. Yastrzemski under the ball. And he's got it to retire the set. The pitcher flies to Yastrzemski. So it's two runs. Two hits. No errors and one left. And at the end of four and a half innings here in Boston, the score is St. Louis four, Boston nothing. Out of half the fifth inning, the lights have been turned here, turned on here at Fenway Park. George Scott will be the first hitter for the Red Sox. And the Cardinals lead by a score of four to nothing to tell you all about it, Harry Carey. All right, here we hear George Scott to read it off. Time is called. As the umpires found something untoward going on in the right field corner, but now we're ready to go. George Scott found his first time up the pit. A little bit low on outside. Gibson has an eye they hit yet. Now the fervor of the crowd can be heard. As they begin to cheer the Red Sox on, here's the pit. There's a long drive. He's going to be way back. Right near the gate of Mercy, out to get the wall.
Robin tried to get to the ball, stumbled over Scott, fell down, and the ball skipped into the Cardinal dugout. Scott scoring. Here's a quick throw with a puck to center. The crowd has now come to life. It's a four to one ball game. Up the Sully waiting, the pitch. It's the strike ball. Two balls and the strike. That was Scott's fourth hit off Gibson and nine times at bat in the series. Out of wind up, here's the delivery. Brings and misses strike two. Up for Sully. Has batted seven times against Gibson. Has fanned five times against him. Home on threat. He can hit that long ball as he proved yesterday. The pitch. Foul tip. And the count. Two balls, two strikes. It was Javier as I guess I was watching the play at third base. I conjectured it was Javier that threw the ball towards third. He'll get the air on the throw. Two balls, two strikes on Petroselli. Here's the pitch. He struck him out swinging. That's the second time in a row in this game that Petroselli is banned. And that is the eighth strikeout for Bob Gibson. Here's Elston Howard. As I mentioned, Scott, here's the pitch. Howard swings. A high top fly, short left field. Block coming in, calling for the ball. He has it. So Howard on the first pitch flies to Brock. One run, one hit, one error, nobody left for the Red Sox in the fifth. And at the end of five full innings, it's the Cardinal four, a Red Sox one. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WMAQ AM and FM, radio home of the Floyd Brown Show, Chicago. More than 100. All right, on to the top half, the sixth inning. The Cardinals have four runs on seven hits. They've made one error. Boston Red Sox have one run on one hit. They have made no error. Gibson all the way and Lombard all the way. The first hitter, it'll be Tim McCarver for the Cardinals as they go in the top half of the sixth inning. Harry? All right, Pee Wee, four to one. The Red Sox have picked up one of those runs. Here is McCarver. Nothing out of two in this game. Pop the short, roll the second. The pitch. In there, a slider, a strike call. McCarver is nothing out of eight against the pitching of Jim Lombard. The Cardinals have had seven hits. The Red Sox won. One strike on Jim McCarver. Just as Lombard gets ready, McCarver steps out of the batter's box. Four to one, we're in the top of the six. St. Louis Reeves, here's the pitch. There's a line drive in the right field. Harrison coming in. He dives for the ball. He drops it down. There goes McCarver on his way to second. A great try by Ken Harrison. And the right field line umpire, Paul Pryor, was right on top of the play. He was ready to indicate that McCarver was out, that Harrison had caught the ball fairly when he saw it pop out of his glove. I think as he hit the ground, the jaw loosened the ball from his mitt. A fine try by Ken Housen. It winds up a double for Tim McCarver. His first hit off line board. So the Cardinals have their leadoff man at second base here in the top of the six. St. Louis four, Red Sox one. Mike Shannon, who's nothing out of eight against line board for the series. Fan and bounced out in this game. Right-handed hitter. We're in the six. The stretch by Lombard, the glance back, and the pitch. Her ball is high and inside. Dan Osinski, a right-hander, and Ken Brett, a left-hander, are busy in the Red Sox bullpen. Shannon, hitting out of a wide straddle. The Cardinals have had eight hits in this game. McCarver leads. Lombard takes a look at him. Here's the pitch. Curveball stand. Oh, great stop by Foy. Picks the ball up. Can't make a play. A vicious smash at Joe Foy, who knocked the ball down, but couldn't make a play. They're going to call it an air. An air charge to Foy. It's not a base hit. 
And the Cardinals have runners at first and second. And here comes manager Dick Williams of the Boston Red Sox. Jim Lombard. You have to admire not only this boy's ability, but his courage. With very sharp rest, he hasn't had this stuff here today. It's been quite obvious. He's going to stay in this ball game. The Cardinals in 18 innings previously in this World Series against Lonborg had a total of only four hits. Today they've had eight. We're in the sixth inning. Runners at first and second. Javier will be the batter. The ball Shannon hit was hit hard. And Foy knocked it down. But it was an error, and there's runners at first and second. Nobody out. Javier, who's had one out of two in this game. Right-handed batter waits. Lombard getting ready. The pitch. Swings, and he fouls it back. Javier was trying to go to the opposite field that time. Don Maxville would be next, followed by Bob Gibson. Runners at first and second. The decisive game of the World Series finds St. Louis leading Boston 4-1. to one. There are Cardinals perched at first and second. Shannon at first, McCarver at second. Now Ron Boy gets ready. Hesitates the belt and pitches to Javier. He swings and misses a curveball. And Javier is in the hole, two strikes and nothing. The Cardinals have gotten away to an early lead. But these Boston Red Sox have made believers of everybody, but the, the way they have fought back so many times this unforgettable season, certainly the most unforgettable in the history of the Boston Ball Club. You know, the Cardinals drew over two million people at their ballpark this year, and the Red Sox, in a much smaller ballpark, drew something like a million seven hundred thousand. That's how much interest they created. Here it is. He held up on a curveball and almost chased it. Two strikes and the ball. We're in the sixth. Cardinal runners at first and second. Nobody out. Javier, who's had eight hits in this series has distinguished himself both at bat and in the field, as a matter of fact. One ball, two strikes. Lomborg leaning forward. McCarver a safe lead at second. Shannon a short one at first. Scott is not holding them on. Lomborg at the belt, the pitch. There's a long drive way back. It might be out of here. It could be. It is a home run. Javier hits one off the screen in left field. And the Cardinals now lead 7 to 1. Javier homers. A high towering drive that hit the screen atop the green monster. And there's Javier's ninth hit in the series. That brings up Don Maxville. Cooley now has driven in four runs for the series. Here's a pitch to Maxville, and it's a fastball low. The Cardinals with two in the third, two in the fifth, and now three in the sixth have a seven to one lead. Here's the pitch, and it's in there, a fastball, a strike call. That's Javier's first World Series home run. Out of pitch. Long and foul tip. In the 1964 World Series, uh, Javier was injured, played only a game or so, and Don Maxwell played second base most of the series. Played only one game. That is a pinch runner. Here's the pitch, long and foul tip. Seven to one in favor of the Cardinals. 
Darrell Maxfield, who started with a triple in the third inning, scored the first run on Kurt Flood's single with two outs. Now to wind up the pitch behind him. And the count is evened up. Two balls, two strikes. Jim Lombard, seven runs on nine hits. Each team has made an error. Out of pitch. Fly ball, right field. Harrelson going over, under the ball, makes the catch. Maxville fly to Harrelson, right center. That's one away, and brings up the pitcher, Bob Gibson, who homered in the fifth. Line hard to Foy in the third. And he's getting a nice hand from the Boston fans. Pitch. Here it is. And there's a curveball in there for a strike call. Gibson pitching his third game in the series as his long board. Each man went into this game having allowed one run. Here's the pitch. I call the fastball. Gibson has won by scores of two to one and six to nothing. The series Lomborg by scores of five to nothing and three to one. Now the pitch, curveball a little bit low. One ball, two strikes. Three runs are in. St. Louis leading seven to one. The Cardinals who never have lost a seven-game World Series. Here's the pitch. Swung a bouncing ball. Two four. He's got it. Over to first base. He's out. Four. He throws out Gibson. That will bring up Lou Brock. Brock got his first hit of the series against Lombard in the fifth. Stole two, stole two bases. And is now swiped six in the series. Brock has had 11 hits. Lombard throws the ball in to Elston Howard. Plate umpire John Stevens looks it over. It's okay, and they toss it back to him. Here's Longborg's pitch. Fastball sinks low and outside. One ball, no strikes. Three runs are in. Two men are out. the delivery. Swung, a line drive down the left field line, and it is a third ball going into the corner. Parks are on first. He's on his way to second. Yastrzemski recovers the ball and fires it back towards the infield. Lou Brock gets his second hit of the game, and 12th of the series, a double into the left field corner. That brings up Kurt Flood. Flutters have one out of two, drove in a run. The hit he got in the third inning was the first hit he had had off Lomborg in the whole series. There's the pitch, and it's a curveball in there for a strike call. Boy, at third base, Petra Sully at short, Andrews at second. Scott at first. Howard the catcher, Lomborg the pitcher. There's Brock and Lee on second base. And Longboard's pitch. Swung and he fouled two. And so Flood has a count of two strikes with two out, three runs in, and Brock at second base. We're in the top of the sixth. Longboard leans forward. Has his sign. Pitching deliberately, glances at second base. Now the pitch, and it's high and outside. One ball, two strikes on Kurt Flood. Joe Schultz coaching at third base for the Cardinals. Dick Sisler at first base. Mike Andrews holding Brock close. Here's the pitch. Curve ball outside. And the count evens, two balls, two strikes.
Flood waiting. Everything's quiet here at the moment. Now the ground strike at second base. The pitch. He stepped him out swinging. Good flood goes on swinging. It's three runs for the Cardinals. Three hits. One air and one left. So, the Red Sox fans up on their feet. Cheering as we go down to the bottom half of the sixth of the score. St. Louis 7, Boston 1. Tartable comes in as a pinch hitter for Jim Longboard. Left handed hitter. The score is 7 to 1 in favor of St. Louis. Here's the wind up and the pitch. Swung and he missed. Strike two. Jose Tartable. Longboard. A fantastic pitcher in this series. And one wonders, there's a pitch and it's a curveball on inside. With proper rest, if he'd had his normal three or four day rest, how this game would have gone. Tartable waiting. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch swung. And he struck him out. Tartable becomes the ninth strikeout victim. Here's Joe Foy. He stand once and walk one. Ball game in the bottom of the six. St. Louis out in front, seven to one. Bob Gibson delivers, and it's a curveball outside. Gibson is allowed two runs now in the series. The right handed delivers, swung on, a high top foul. Coming back, McCarver has a play under the ball. He takes it. So Foy fouls to McCarver. Two men up, two men down, and here's Mike Andrews. Andrews sacrificed in the first inning, was out on strikes in the fourth. Two men are out. Gibson is allowed one hit, a triple by George Scott. Here's the pitch. There's a smash and one half to Maxville. There's a throw over the first, in time. Andrews hit the ball hard, but a one bounce right at Maxville. So it's one, two, three, nothing across. And at the end of six innings, it's St. Louis seven, Boston one. They're going in the top half of the seventh inning. New pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, Jose Santiago. San Luis Cardinal. Seven runs on ten hits. They've made one error. The Boston Red Sox, one run on one hit. They've made one error. The first hitter for the Cardinals in the top half of the seventh inning, Roger Maris. Harry. All right, Pee Wee. Maris, left-handed batter. He's driven in a run today and had two singles, two out of two. Here's the pitch. Santiago's curveball is swung on and missed. Santiago had won 12 and lost four during the season with an earned run average of 3.60. One strike, no ball. Here's the pitch. And it's a fastball in there for a strike call. This is the third appearance for Santiago. His first in relief. He lost two as a starter. The pitch to Mara swung on. A high pop foul. Off to the left of the plate. Howard Chase again over to the stands. Out of play. And the count remains two strikes on Roger Maris. We're in the top of the seventh. The score is seven to one. St. Louis. Maris, who's had 10 out of 25 in the series of 400 average, has driven in seven runs. Now the wind up by Santiago to pitch. There's a long drive, but it's Chris foul. Onto the roof in the right field corner. Maris got out in front. Pull that ball, but foul. Two strikes is the count. Santiago winds the pitch. Curveball outside. Left-handed hitter digging in. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Another long drive foul. Just missed the light tower that time. Santiago from Puerto Rico. 
done since boyhood of Orlando Cepeda, the Cardinals. 27-year-old right-hander winds, and here's the pitch. High fly ball, left center field. Yastrzemski going over, but so is Reggie Smith near the wall, and he has it. Maris fly deep to Reggie Smith in left center. That's one out and brings up Orlando Cepeda. Facing his countrymen here. Cepeda, nothing out of three in this contest. One out, nobody on. The ball game in the seventh. With the Redbirds out in front, seven to one. Santiago winds, and here's the pitch. A fastball in there for a strike call. One strike to no ball. One out, nobody on. Top of the seventh. Santiago's pitch. Curveball in there, a strike call. And Santiago quickly out in front of Cepeda. With two fast strikes. The outfield plays Cepeda straight away and deep. The pitch. Curveball into the dirt outside. One ball, two strikes. Crowd in the neighborhood of 36,000. Whatever they can get in here. For the decisive game of the World Series. Here's the pitch. He struck him out swinging. Cepeda goes down swinging. That's two out and brings up Tim McCarter. I think Orlando will be glad when this series is over, Pee Wee. He's having a tough one. Yeah, I'm sure that he will uh, be, Harry, because Orlando Cepeda had quite a season. He led the Cardinals with the National League pennant. He's quite a hitter, but he's just in one of those slumps that can't seem to get on track. Here's McCarver, and the pitch swung on, popped up. Elston Howard, who's going to get it? Boy comes down the line from third base and grabs it right in front of home plate. McCarver on the first pitch, popped the four. The Cardinals go down in order. One, two, three. He's only fanned once in the whole series. And that time he was called out. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. He walked the ball four. So Yastrzemski starts the seventh for the Red Sox with a base on ball. And that brings up Tim Harrelson. Harrelson is nothing out of two in this game. Right-handed batter up there. George Scott will be next. So the Red Sox have the heart of their lineup coming up. Here's the pitch. Curve ball in there for a strike call on Harrelson. He fanned twice in this game. Called out in the first, swinging in the fourth. 
On the stretch, the pitch. It's a fastball, low and inside. One ball, one strike. Right-handed hitter waiting. Yastrzemski at first base. Cepeda doesn't hold him on. Now the pitch. Low, ball two. Two balls and a strike. And Red Shandy's, the Cardinal manager, comes trotting out the top. He's pitching Bob Gibson. These uh, fans enjoying themselves and hoping for a Boston rally here in these closing innings. Whatever Red Shandy said to Gibson didn't take long because he's back off the field. And works quickly. A runner at first base, Yastrzemski, the pitch to Harrison. He's one and he missed. And the count evens at two balls, two strikes. Hey, a lot of times in a situation like that, the manager will tell the pitcher to kind of take it easy, slow down, you're pitching too fast. But this is the type of uh, game that Gibson pitches. He always pitches fast. 2-2 two, two pitch. Here it is. Bouncing ball turned short. Maxwell has it. Second base for one. First base, safe. So Harrelson forces Yastrzemski from Maxwell to Javier. As one away, and that brings up George Scott, who has the only hit of the game. A triple off the center field wall. During the regular season, hit 303 with 19 homers and 82 runs batted in. He's been especially effective against Bob Gibson in this World Series with four hits and nine times at bat. Right handed batter with great power, the pitch. And it's in there, a slider caught the outside corner at the knees, strike one call. A runner at first base is Harrelson, there's one out. Scott didn't like that pitch. Now moves back into the batter's box. Eddie Popowski coaching at third base. Bobby Doerr at first base. The stretch by Gibson, the pitch. Curled in there, a strike call. Two strikes and nothing. Gibson is fan nine. In his first game of the World Series, he fan ten. In his second game, he struck out six. Here's the pitch. Foul tip. As Scott had a good cut. Two strikes, no ball. Yastrzemski opened the inning with a walk, but was forced by Ken Harrelson. The Red Sox have had one run, one hit, one air. The Cardinals, seven runs, ten hits, one air. That's the story as of now. The stretch by Gibson, the pitch to Scott. Swung on, a hard pop foul. McCarver coming back near the screen, may have a play. He does. Scott fouls to McCarver. Two away. And that will bring up Reggie Smith, the brilliant center fielder of the Red Sox, who at age 22 would seem to have some future, Pee Wee. Well, I've seen uh, Reggie Smith quite a bit this year, and he's going to be a good hitter. There's no doubt about that. Has one of the greatest arms I've ever seen. I have seen him make a couple of throws this year, throwing men out at home plate where I thought he had no chance to throw a runner out. And you're right, Harry, he's going to be a great one. He's had two home runs in this World Series. He's nothing out of two in this game. Here's Gibson's pitch. And it's a fastball high and outside. Reggie Smith has had one hit against Bob Gibson in the World Series, one out of eight. Two men are gone, Harrelson's at first base. We're in the bottom of the seventh, Gibson's pitch. And it's a fastball high and outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Reggie steps out of the batter's box, takes a look at the third base coach, Ed Popowski. The Red Sox trailing by six. They've been a miracle team all year long. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike call. A good slider. Caught the outside corner about knee high. Two men are away. Bottom of the seventh. Bob Gibson. From the belt delivers. Hot shot foul. Bobby Doerr. Does a little cha-cha-cha step down there. Skips the rope as it were. And let's the foul ball roll under his feet.
We have a runner at first. Ken Harrelson, who forced Claude Yastrzemski to open the inning with a walk. Scott then fouled to McCarver, and we have Reggie Smith up there swinging and pulling the ball foul out of the park. Two balls, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the seventh. The Cardinals got out in front early with two in the third, two in the fifth, three in the sixth. The Red Sox scored in the fifth. Here's the pitch. High ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Harrelson will be going with the pitch. Enrico Petroselli is kneeling in the on-deck circle. There's a stretch. There goes Harrelson, the pitch. Bouncing ball foul. Past Bobby Doerr again. And Ken Harrelson returns to first base. Gibson has walked two and fan nine, allowed one hit. Reggie Smith, the batter. Switch hitter. Hitting left-handed, of course, against Bob Gibson. Three balls, two strikes. There goes Harrelson. Here's the pitch swamp. High pop fly. Down the first baseline. Javier calling to the ball. Makes the catch with his back to the infield. Reggie Smith popped to Javier. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. And at the end of seven full innings, St. Louis seven, Boston one. Harry Carey and I'm P.B. Reese bringing you the seventh game of the World Series. You're at Fenway Park in Boston. We're going to the top half the eighth inning. The first hitter for the Cardinals will be Mike Shannon. Then it'll be Javier and Dal Maxwell. San Diego will be the pitcher. He took over for Jim Lombard, who started this game for the Boston Red Sox. Gibson's still in there for the Cardinals. I'll tell you all about it, Harry Carey. All right, Pee Wee Mike Shannon will lead it off for the Cardinals. He's nothing out of three in this game. Facing Jose Santiago. Ball game in the top of the eighth. St. Louis out in front. Santiago has his sign. And the pitch to Shannon. Swung on a bouncing ball. Petroselli has it. That good arm of his. And Shannon is out at first base. Petroselli throws out Shannon. One away. Petroselli is a... Looks about as fine-looking a shortstop as you could want to see. Great arm. Moves around gingerly. Has good range. And not only that, he hits the ball with power. Here's Javier, who's had two hits in this game, including a three-run homer. Santiago's pitch. And it's a fastball in there for a strike call. Jim Lomborg pitched the first six innings. Santiago has retired four men in a row. Dave Moorhead is now warming up in the Boston bullpen. Santiago's pitch. Curveball, and he went fishing for that one. Missed it a mile. A wide-breaking curve. Strike two on Javier. Javier has had nine hits in the series and 24 times at bat. Including a three-run homer. His first World Series home run. Out of pitch. Long drive right field. Harrison going back. Near the track. Leads and he makes the catch. A beautiful play. Ken Harrelson went back to the track and made a backhanded leaping catch of Javier's bid for an extra base hit. A fine play by the converted outfielder. Harry Kidd is not supposed to be a good defensive outfielder, but that was a tough play. That ball was hit directly over his hand. It was a tough play. He turned right on it and caught it right up against the fence. Here's Don Maxville. And the first pitch to him is high and inside. Knoxville has had one hit today. Let off the third inning with a triple. And later scored on a two-out single by Flood. Here's the pitch. Curveball low. Santiago seems much sharper today than he did in either game he started. He pitched real well in the first game, but lost 2-1 to one to Gibson. On the windup, and here's the pitch. High pop fly on the infield. George Scott backing out on the grass, waiting for it. He takes it. Knoxville pops out to Scott. One, two, three, nothing across. And 
and at the end, the seven and a half innings here at Boston. The score, St. Louis seven, the Red Sox one. Dalton Jones is going to be the pinch hitter next. Hunter Sully, 0 for 2 today, the pitch is high. Ball two. Hunter Sully fanned in the second and fanned again in the fifth. Right-handed batter with good power. It's 17 homers during the season. Here's the pitch. A fastball in there for a strike call. Two balls and a strike. Here's the windup and the pitch. Line drive base hit into the left field corner. Right the extra bases. Cut the Sully's around first. He's heading for second. Drops throw. Save the second base. A strong throw by Lou Brock out of the left field corner. But cut the Sully went sliding into the box safely. Now there's the second hit. The Red Sox have had two hits on Pinson and both have been for extra bases. A triple by Scott and a double by Petroselli. Here's Dalton Jones. Seven hits in the series, batting 389. Left-handed hitter. Hit 289 during the season. The pitch. Gets away from the primary and Petroselli advances to third. Let's see how they're going to call that. And Billy Muffet comes out of the Cardinal dugout. He used to pitch for the Boston Red Sox. He's a pitching coach for the St. Louis Cardinals now. He used to pitch for St. Louis also. And he's talking to Bob Gibson. A double by Petroselli and a wild pitch. Places Petroselli at third base with nobody out. And Dalton Jones is ahead with Norm Seaburn waiting to pitch up next. Jones is bounding for Elston Howard. Seaburn will be hitting for Jose Santiago. The Cardinal infield plays back. They're willing to concede the run. They have a 7 to 1 lead. The line up by Gibson the fifth. Fastball outside. Ball two. Steve Carlton, a left hander. Nelson Brown, the right hander, are in the Cardinal bullpen. The line up the fifth. Roaring again with a good start here in the eighth inning. The pitch. Oh, four, he wants it. Now, Dalton Jones gets a base on ball. And that will bring up Norm Seaburn. Left handed batter Cepeda comes over the top. The Bob Gibson. Not for Gibson is the third base on ball he has given. In the previous two games, he had walked only one man. Well, here's Seaver with runners at first and third. St. Louis leading 7-1. Seaver, left hand hit of the pitch. There's a strike at the knees call. One strike and no more. As a pinch hitter most of the way, drove in seven runs. Makes his home outside of Kansas City now. Formerly played with the Yankees as well as other clubs. Here's a stretch pitch to him. Bouncing ball to Javier. The run will score. The throw is the second, fourth play. Seaver drives in a run as he forces Dalton Jones from Javier to Maxwell. That makes it seven to two. Here in the bottom of the eighth. And here's Joe Ford. against Gibson in the series. The pitch. And it's a stack of slider caught the outside corner. Gibson throwing all hard stuff. Fastballs and sliders. Seaver, a short lead off first base. The Red Sox have to play it safe. They're looking for the big inning. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Low. Into the dirt. That evens it up with a ball and a strike. 
Gibson still throwing hard. Steve Powell to the left hand and Nelson Brown, the right hander. Both starting pitchers during the year for the Cardinals during the bullpen. One ball, one strike. Their pitch. He swung and he missed the curveball. Joe Foy. Right handed batter who has power. Here's the pitch. A spinner down to it. Cepeda backhands the ball, crosses to Maxwell for the fourth play. Cepeda ranged to his right. For a spinner hit off the end of the bat with a lot of reverse spin. Those kind can cause a lot of trouble frequently. But the ball came up for him. He fielded it backhanded and flipped the Maxwell for the force out of Seaver. Well, now here is Mike Andrews with a runner at first, two out, the score is seven to two. Hector Sully opened the same with a double, advanced on a wild pitch and scored on a force out. After Dalton Jones had walked, batting for Elston Howard, Norm Siebert hitting for Santiago, bounced into a fourth play, allowing Petro Sully to score. Now the pitch to Andrews. He didn't mean to swing and move pass down the first base line. Gibson fields the ball and throws over to Cepeda. Gibson coming off the mound quickly. Andrews trying to stop his swing. And so it's one run, one hit, no errors, one left. And at the end of eight full innings, St. Louis 7, Boston 2, top of the ninth inning. The Cardinals are out in front, 7 to 2. A new pitcher out there for the... Watch the Red Sox. And now to uh, wind up the final game of the 1967 World Series, NBC's partner to Kurt Gowdy on the game of the week, Pee Wee Reese. Okay, thank you, Harry, very much. We have a new pitcher, Dave Boyd. We'll pause for 30 seconds for station identification. WMAQ, AM and FM, Chicago. The bottom of the top half of ninth inning. The Cardinals, seven runs, ten hits, and one air. The Boston Red Sox, two runs, only two hits, and one air. Bob Gibson, the first hitter. And the players are here sitting by my side now. I'm going to work on NBC with Tony Kubek every Saturday, and I've worked with him before. It's a pleasure having him here. Jim Simpson. Jim? Thank you, Pee Wee, very much. Bob Gibson swings on the first pitch, ballot off the right, strike one. The last inning here, unless the Red Sox can come up with five runs in the bottom half of the ninth inning, and don't ever count this ball club out. They've done the impossible all year. Four heads pitch to Bob Gibson, swung on, missed strike two. Pitcher for the Red Sox, Jim Lombard, started for the Red Sox in Santiago. A big curveball by Mohead, struck out. Mr. Gibson. They're starting the top half tonight there. Gibson strikes out, and that brings up Lou Brock. Lou Brock. At part of series. He's had two hits today. Got a base hit in the fifth inning. Stole second. And then stole third. Got a double in the sixth inning. The first pitch to Lou Brock by Mohead is low and outside. Ball one. The Cardinals scored two in the third, two in the fifth, and three in the sixth. Red Sox scored one in the fifth and one in the bottom of the eighth. A breaking pitch inside. Two balls. No strikes on Lou Brock. Kurt Flood in the on-deck circle. It's gone right down to the wire. We're in the ninth inning now, the seventh game of the World Series. Fastball just caught the inside corner. Makes it count two balls and one strike on Lou. Lou Brock, the left fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. He has stolen six bases in these seven games. He came into this game batting 400. He's two for four today. They play him straight away. The third baseman, Dalton Jones, way in on the grass. The count is now three balls and one strike as if this was too low. Dalton Jones 
has taken over at third base for George Scott. Moorhead's pitch to Rock is found off the left. We also have a new catcher, Russ Gibson, as we had a pinch hitter for Elson Howard in the last inning. The Red Sox, whatever happens in this game, I'll say one thing for them, they have nothing to be ashamed of. They have played great ball. There's a fastball inside. Ball four, so Blue Brock gets a free ticket. And the score being 7-2, to two, Blue Brock, who loves to run, on top of five, he may not run here. Kirk Blood is a hitter with one away. There goes Brock. He took off the throw of the Gibson in the dirt. Gets by Andrews. Petroselli cuts it off, but Little Brock gets his third stolen base of the day. And the seventh in the series. Dalton Jones playing third in the place of Joe Foy. Russ Gibson in the place of Elson Howard. A new record has just been established by Lou Brock. Seven stolen bases. The pitch is outside. And one thing about this Brock, whenever he gets on, seems like he upsets everyone. The pitcher, the catcher, and the infielders. And for playing infield, so much when I got to get a run, you have to always watch him. As a pitch, it's outside. Three balls. No strikes. On Kurt Blood, the next hitter is Roger Mara. The Red Sox trail in this game by a score of 7-2. to two. Gibson all the way for the Cardinals. Here's the pitch. Fastball, time outside. So Blood gets a free ticket. And that brings up Roger Maris. What has Roger done today? He's single in the first inning, single in the third inning. Hit a sacrifice by in the fifth inning and hit a five ball to Reggie Smith in center field in the seventh inning. He's two for three. Moorhead's pitch to him. A breaking pitch inside, ball one. But Moorhead's got a little wild streak here. Moorhead has a real good overhand curveball, a good changeup. His only problem is getting that curveball over. One ball, no strike for Roger Maris. Here's the pitch of that ball inside. Makes the count 2 0. Nick Williams, out to say something to Moorhead. Russ gets in the catcher, comes out. In the bullpen, we have Dan Osinski warming up. And now then a left-hander has jumped up. And his name is Ken Brett, 19-year-old left-hander we saw over in St. Louis, and he looks sharp. He can bring it pretty hard. William is now going off the field, gets him back to his position. Had a few words with Moorhead. Time to settle him down. Runners on first and second. Brock on at second. On at first, Kurt Blood. Roger Maris for the hitter. It's one away. Two balls, no strikes on him. Moorhead looks back at Brock at second base. Here's the pitch. A swing and a foul. Straight back. And the count is two balls and one strike on Roger. As Harry Carey said a while ago that Brock very seldom steals third. He saw him all year, but he did take off the last time he's on second and stole third. Just watching him, he does not get too big of a jump. Petroselli is playing pretty close to him, right in back of him. Roger Maris takes the next pitch. It's low and outside, ball three. Andrews, the second baseman, is playing Roger Maris to pull. He's way over toward first base. Petroselli, over close to the bag. Dalton Jones at third, right level with the bag. There's the pitch. It's high inside, ball four. So the bases are loaded. third walk 
giving up the forehead and coming out of the dugout. An old friend of mine who played with me over at the Dodgers, and I played against him quite a few years when he was with the Giants, and quite a pitcher he was. His name is Sal Magley, and he just gave a little sign out to the bullpen. Looks to me like we're going to get a right-hander, and I believe it will be Dan Osinski. Not only has Brock broken the series record with seven stolen bases, his three steals in a game ties the series record. That was held by Hans Wagner. A lot of you fans will remember the great shortstop that played with the Pirates, and I had a pleasure of beating Hannes before he passed on, and what a great one he was. Well, Jim, up to this point, what have you thought about this game? Well, TV, for those of you, uh, whom are Red Sox fans, of course the Red Sox are in deep trouble now that Moorhead has given up three consecutive walks with only one out. But we can only look ahead because it is up to the Red Sox to do the scoring of more runs. In the last of the ninth, it'll be Yastrzemski, Harrelson, and Scott. In other words, the Red Sox go right into the middle of their power. Okay, Jim. Well, it's just a shame. Jim Lundborg, who started this game, and he looked pretty good for a while, and you have to give him a lot of credit. He showed nothing but courage all year. He's pitched the big games for the Red Sox when they needed him. I saw him pitch that game on Sunday. I guess the Minnesota Twins when they had to win. Not only did he pitch and win the game, he started the rally. That brought him back with a bunt down the third base line. He's pitched a lot of the baseball this year. Wow. This is Jay Simpson along with Pee Wee Reese back at Fenway Park in Boston. We're in the ninth inning. The bases are loaded with one out, and the Cardinals lead 7 2. Osinski, the new pitcher, and he'll face Orlando Cepeda. Pee Wee? The bases are loaded. Orlando Cepeda, the hitter. And all the runners got there by the way of a walk by Moorhead. The first pitch for Osinski. It's popped up down the third baseline in foul territory. Dalton Jones calls for it. Brett Rico Petroselli comes over and backs of him. Lou Brock at third base, tags up, makes a little bluff with no one there at third. But I don't think he was really serious about it. Or since he, the pitcher, came in and cut the ball off. But two ways. That's Cepeda. Still having trouble with that bat. Now then, we're going to have Magley come back out again. And wouldn't be a bit surprised. And we may see the young left-hander, Ken Brett, coming in here. And the fans like this. Ken Brett, 19 years old. This will be good experience for him, Jim. He may be around for a long time. He looked very good in St. Louis, Pee-wee, and as the Carver's about to come to bat, we cannot help but remember what you and Harry Kerr have been saying all along, that McCarver, as well as Elson Howard of the Boston Red Sox, have not been having good series with their bat. But Pee-wee, I'm sure that you will agree that they are the men who have been handling the pitchers, such as Jim Lonborg, Nelson Wiles, and of course Bob Gibson. They're the ones who run this ball club, or these ball clubs when they're on the field. And in that respect... I would say that McCarver and Howard have done tremendous jobs. It is only a shame that uh, Howard, who could be playing his last year, and McCarver, who had such a great series back in 1964, have not done better as hitters. But as catchers, they've done exactly what they're supposed to do. Ken Brett is coming in. Here we go. Okay, Jim, yes, sir. McCarver, as you said, has not had a good series with the bat. But back in 1964, talk about hitting. He was a batting leader in the 64, 64 series, hitting a cool 478, getting at least one hit in each of the seven games. And his 478 average was the best by a National League player since Pepper Martin's 500 in 1931. Now, you're talking about Pepper Martin and the old gas house gang, the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, it would have been nice, Jim, to see a couple of fellows here at the series. I understand one of them was here, Lefty Grove, a great pitcher with the Red Sox, and he was the last pitcher to win 30 games in the American League, 31 in 1931, and Dizzy Dean, who pitched for the Cardinals, he was the last pitcher to win 
30 games in the National League. That was back in 1934. Dean pitching for the Cardinals and Gold pitching for the Red Sox and a couple of great ones. Well, we're about ready to go as young Ken Brett ready to take over with the bases loaded. Two men away and Tim McCarver is a hitter. Block on, block on at third. Flood on at second. And Roger Maris on at first base. Let's have a look at Ken Brett. Into the windup. The pitch. Good fastball. Hit down to George Scott at first base. He'll take it himself. One pitch. And the Yucks in the route. So that's all for the Cardinals here. In the top half of the ninth inning. No run. So the score, after eight and a half innings of play, St. Louis Cardinals 7 to Boston Red Sox 2. Okay, we, move, we move now to the bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Yastrzemski, Harrelson, and Scott. And I'm sure that everyone in New England knows and around the country that the Boston Red Sox were not supposed to have won the American League pennant. Those two big games for the Minnesota Twins came from behind and won both. They were down three games to one to the Cardinals and have come back to win the next two to stop this series at 6-6. Six, six. They're now down by five runs, seven to two, three outs to go. But here's the big one coming up, Huey. Now Yastrzemski. Yes, sir. Never count them out. Bob Gibson's first pitch to Yastrzemski is low and outside. Ball one, the last chance for the Red Sox. And they have a great one starting off here in the top, bottom half of the ninth inning. They trail 7-2. Bob Gibson's pitch to call Yastrzemski. A fastball on the top side. Ball two. He'll have action in the Cardinal. Full pin. Nelson Bounds and Steve Clark. Brown's the right-hander, caught the left-hander. Yastrzemski takes the next pitch. It's too low. Ball three. The last time up, Yastrzemski walked. The three and zero pitch. Yastrzemski will be taking all the way. He was and was right down in the ball strike one. He backs out of there. Checks with Kwiatkowski's coach at third base. Is it Eddie? You want me to swing at this one or take it? Three and one's a count on him. Here's the pitch. He's swinging at base hit out of the right field. for the Cardinals. Cepeda at first, Javier at second, Maxwell at Sherrick. Mike Shannon at third base. Bob Gibson's pitch to Harrelson. High and inside. Ball two. Red Sandy is coming out of the dugout. Wants to count to his pitcher, Bob Gibson. A carver out. Mike Shannon in. Red Shandies gives him a little pat. As Steve Croft, the left hander, Nelson Brown, continue to throw in the bullpen. Red says, Bob, take it easy. Not too fast. As Bob Gibson falls behind, Ken Harrelson here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Carl Yastrzemski on at first base. Gibson, one set. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there for call strike one. No one away. The score, Cardinals seven. The Red Sox two in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. Little tap is foul down the third baseline. Shannon in, picks the ball up and drops it. He was a count up at two and two. Harrelson all for three on the day. Struck out the first and in the fourth. Get the force out in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch to him. Down foul out to Maxwell Short to flip over to Javier for one. The throw to first, another play. A real fine double play as Maxwell had to go in the hole. The charge got for the Cardinals. Gave the ball with something on it to Javier at second base. And the throw over to Cepeda for a double play. 
scores two away. And brings up George Scott. The last hope for the Red Sox. He swings on the first pitch and fouls it back. Strike one. Scott. One for three. Hit a triple in the fifth inning. Scored one of the runs. Here's Bob Gibson's pitch to him. It's high. Makes the count one ball and one strike. Well, I certainly hope that you fans have enjoyed this World Series. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. Scott. Foul straight back. One ball, two strikes on him. Bob Gibson. Looking for his third win in the series. The one and two pitch to Scott. And he struck him out. And that's all for George Scott. And that's all for the Pete.